Alright guys, touch a bit here today on CWL 4 update to arguably Eclipse Day 1 in terms of how crazy the action was. What a day of Call of Duty we had once again. So many mental results. These, these games have been so intriguing to watch, so exciting and probably some of the best Call of Duty I've watched in a long time. And the final eight teams that are going into Championship Sunday will surprise those of you who didn't watch yesterday's action. So if you did, I hope you did because it was fantastic stuff overall in terms of the excitement factor. I guess I had to miss a couple of games because I really yet to go to bed. But yeah, I'm going to be going through all of yesterday's action today. The big story, of course, is Optic Gaming are no longer in the tournament, but there are some other very big names that have also dropped out over the course of it, and the two favourites, arguably, in Splice and Luminosity, coming from that Pool C. Not a lot of people expected that, so we'll go through all the storylines today. Like if you enjoy, subscribe if you're new as always. I hit 10k yesterday, but I'll go into more detail on that in a future video, I'm sure of it. So let's get right in with it. So firstly, we had Jinji versus LG, and one of the stories of the day here was really that Genji were very much struggling in their search and destroy. Personally, I think this team with Envoy is better than the team with Spacely in terms of their full potential, but their search and destroy has been struggling. Now, whether that is a result of Envoy coming in for Spacely, whether Spacely actually had a really big impact in that sector is, well, I'm not 100% sure it's as clear cut as that. I think that considering Genji didn't lose a single search, in the Pro League, a lot of teams will have looked into their strats, and I'm sure that kind of the strats that Genji are trying to pull off now are very similar to what they were doing with Spacey. They've just kind of taught Envoy the ropes of how to deal with that. But they really struggled in search, but they were unbelievable in hard points. So I guess that counts each other out because Genji won both hard points in this series, losing both searches to LG and, uh, yeah, well, search and destroy wins championships, hey. And LG get the better of a hot Genji in round number one. This is honestly a very impressive victory for LG. We've got to give them their props. We were talking at the time whether they need a roster change and the like, and they've stuck it out. They've relearned the game from basics. Gunless looks like arguably the best player in the game right now. The amount of games he just takes over, he doesn't miss bullets, guys. So exciting to watch. John's back to form. Classic's using this Rampart meta that seems to be working for him. And Slack is playing much better as well. Very intriguing team to watch right now. And they seem to be bringing a lot to the table in Search and Destroy as well, given they can beat Gen G in it. Then E6-3-0 Wreck. This is just like classic reciprocity. They get through the first day. They go in game fires of everyone. They manage to top the pool of death with NVE United and Optic Gaming. And then they get 3 0 by E6. So yeah, I don't want to say too much more on that. Optic versus EG. This was a crazy series because Optic made a ridiculous ridiculous map one comeback they were down like 205 to like 80 or something they bring it back to win on hacienda map two they're down 5-2 eg throw it away and then optic gaming close out the control very comfortably this was the start of what well optic gaming fans hope would be a nice losers bracket run didn't end up being that way and i think maybe a lot of people could see even in the way they beat eg here eg got smoked in their pool and uh, the fact that Optic Gaming were even close with this team was, I think, worrying signs. Then we have UIU knocking out Midnight in losers round one. UIU just crushed him. Midnight, not a good team right now by any means. And UIU looking very solid with Parzellian on the team. And then the next winners round one matchup, Red versus Envious. Envy reverted to what I would suggest is their normal form to some degree when Apathy and Assault aren't taking over games. Because I think that is the real issue with this team. If Who Can Silly aren't dominating, then they very much struggle. And especially when they don't have that backup support from Aix, Apathy and Assault, which they tend to have not done. But yeah, Red did a really good job here. Considering they beat 100 Thieves yesterday, they come in against Envy, pretty much smoke them. I mean, okay, a couple of maps were close. The first map, Joe went absolutely off. Map number two, Zero from his truck got a big two-piece to win in the game. And then Joe and uh, Zero, sorry, he went off in map number three as well for them to beat Envy and knock them down to loser's bracket. Splice versus Denial. I honestly thought Denial were about to do it again, considering they beat Splice 3-2 in the league and then they bring it all the way to a game five again splice finally get the better of them this time but they were down 0-2 like in the last game it was almost looking a little bit sketchy for a second there so winners round one is over and the matches are set 100 thieves versus e united was the next losers bracket match and e united knocked out the tournament they lost to only optic gaming team envious and 100 thieves to go out of the tournament did e united but they finished top 16 the worst placing that was even possible surely they have to make a change now right simp is sitting there on the bench they can 
substitute him in for one of the players on their team. I very much doubt that that won't happen given they've had a horrible result here, even though they've lost to fantastic teams. 100 Thieves pretty much dealt with business here. Heretics scraped past EXG. EXG nearly pulled off the reverse sweep, but Heretics managed to deal with them in the end. And then we have the big series, Opta Gaming versus Gen G. This is the one where Opta couldn't quite make it happen. And yeah, well, Gen G and this new Envoy squad, very scary indeed. Opta Gaming definitely not playing up to their potential, I guess. And they really didn't look like the self you would expect of them. At the same time, I think a lot of other teams have caught up to where Optic were at Vegas. Because Optic went through Vegas with something ridiculous like a 25 in 4 map count or a 24 in 5 map count. Here they go 11 in 9 in terms of map count. So uh, not impressive by any means. So Genji managed to win the first gridlock hard point. Optic bring it back in the search and destroy. And then Genji won the control. I thought this was going to be the swing mode. And I thought Optic Gaming had it in the back. But that round number 4, Nagafen clutched up so hard and took Genji to a round number 5. And well, Seaside control is very defense heavy. So the fact that Naga was able to, you know, Naga and Genji were able to win that really helped propel them to the victory in the control. Opta Gaming won map number four hardpoint just off individual brilliance from Dashi and TJ really just popping three pieces, popping four pieces. And then at game number five, it really did come down to the wire, but of course there was that one round, that Envoy 1 versus 3, when he somehow managed to push out the door, kill TJ, Karma was just sitting in mid, definitely the communication was off between them, Envoy stunned Karma, planted the bomb, he ran away, played the round very intelligently indeed, and yeah, Karma couldn't get the better of him, and that really did spell the end, especially when they did that really quick A push towards the end as well, did Genji, and yeah, dealt with Opta Gaming. Now, of course it's a surprising result for a lot of people, um, I wonder what you guys think was the cause of this in the comment section below like why do you think optic gaming was so disappointing here obviously they didn't play well enough but do you think to some degree they got unlucky was it something to do with the boot camp you would say or was it you know the fact that dashi wasn't in the team during the pro league to give them the opportunity to practice while the other teams were even though that reason doesn't really make too much sense when you then look at gen g that have made a roster change five days ago and have still managed to come out and beat Top of the Gaming here. So be interested to hear your thoughts on it. It's an interesting one. I'll probably make follow-up content on it, especially on that map five here with Gen G, because that was one that arguably they made so many uncharacteristic mistakes, I guess, of their CWL Vegas search and destroy form. The kind of mistakes you'd expect them, the vintage optic to make, I guess, of last year and, and before when they couldn't win a search and destroy to save their lives. So 100 Thieves versus Denial really did smoke them right here. I, I feel like I should make some more content on this pool play situation because 100 Thieves lost one series to Red Reserve and I guess they lost two maps to Enigma 6 as well but effectively they lose one series and they go down to losers. A very strong team. They're beating a United here. They're beating Denial and they win their third series of the day as well so they have a real chance to storm through this losers bracket but I really think it's tough that they had to go to losers to start with given that say Reciprocity had lost that game 5 round 11 to Envious then Envy would have been 3-0 and then there'd have been three teams on 1-2 and, and Optic would have made it out on a 1-2 record when 100 Thieves didn't make it in on a 2-1 record. So I think there needs to be some changes there. Probably talk about that more down the line. Then Heretics knock out Envy from the tournament. Heretics did not look good pretty much this entire tournament. But this series, they really turned it up. And yeah, I was I guess I was impressed with Heretics. It's so interesting what Envy are capable of. I did talk about it in my Discord, I think, just saying that. And the Discord link's in the description box below this video if you want to come and chat about the games, you know, today. Because they start pretty early. That's why I'm trying to get this video a little bit earlier than I did yesterday but regardless Envy played Heretics and Envy is just a team where on the flip of a coin they can just be the best team or they can be really really mediocre and it's exactly what happened here and I did call before this tournament that I think that Envy not making a roster change given they had that good second week may come back to bite them and they finished top 12 and I think they're going to have to consider something because this Hoot kid, man, he's way too good to place top 12. The fact they lose those two series to Red and Heretics in the fashion they did, only winning one map on the Saturday to go out of the tournament, is really tragic. And that's kind of the form I expected from Envy, but they pulled something special out in groups, I guess, given Assault and Apathy were going off quite a lot. But is that really maintainable? They've got a really tough situation on their hands. UYU played Reciprocity then in loser's bracket. Reciprocity took it all the way to game five, as of course they always do. And 
and they won it. Unbelievable from Rake. This team with Dylan is looking something else. He is a monster. If you watch him play, I'll show you a clip in a second from this final game. Reciprocity versus Gen G because Dylan Codman is something else. They beat out UIU, a very tightly fought series. Map number two, Tommy just had the most ridiculous 1v3 clutch. I have no idea what Parzelion was doing, but I guess it, they were down 5-0 anyway, so they weren't going to bring it back. And they win the search and destroy as well. Maybe a bit more time with Parzelion on UYU. They'll have a better idea of what they're going on in search and destroy. But in terms of the respawns, UYU looking very solid indeed. The pacing seems to work rather nicely with Parzelion on methods, but reciprocity get the better of them. And it's, you know, they make a storming run through losers. It's just a shame I think they lost to Enigma 6 in the fashion they did because they did not play any anywhere near to their potential that series if they'd have won that I really think they could have mixed it up because they like going game five against basically any team they play and on the subject of Enigma 6 LG smoked them wiped the floor with Enigma 6 this was not even close map number one was relatively comfortable like 250 to 140 something like that game two formal had a nasty 1v2 with the sniper they just absolutely smoked them like when the guys on LG are just laughing it's crazy actually one thing about game number one Gunless dropped 43 kills not even EKAA, 43 pure kills, took over the game completely, got streaks. Like, this guy is so weird. Like, if I was playing and I was going off, like, 35 and 13, there'd be a, a corner of my mind, like, there's no way I can keep this up. Like, there's no way I'm going to keep winning these gunfights forever. Gunless does not think like that. Gunless is just a machine. Just unbelievable. Definitely, arguably, the best player in the game right now, considering, yes, Dashi was unreal this event on Optic Gaming. The rest of his team, not so much. Dashi still played very, very well. You could tell he was still frying. But, you know, given the placings, arguably, you've got to put Gunless up there as potentially the best player in the game right now, right? You know, you've got guys like Temp as well. Maybe LG versus Spice tomorrow, and we'll look at the schedule in a second. We'll spell how that's going to end up, especially how they performed during the series. But definitely a discussion that maybe we can have in a few days' time. So LG deal with E6 comfortably. This was not particularly close at all. Then Heretics play 100 Thieves and loses 100 T. Get the better of them in the end. And Heretics control has really been what's let them down. Their hard point in their search has been, you know, it's there and thereabouts, but a bit iffy. I don't, I'm not sure they won a single control. Maybe they won one this tournament, but I can't be a good control record because every time they seem to play control, they seem to get pretty smoked. Even in their 3-1 victory against Envy, that was the map they lost. So yeah, it's the swing game mode and it cost them here against 100 Ds, but 100 Ds won a couple of close maps early on and yeah, they managed to close it out. Then we have the other winner's round two match in Splice versus Rare. This is a match I couldn't quite stay up to watch. I watched the first map and then I thought, oh, well, you know, Splice are going to potentially run away with this one. And this was very, impressive from Splice I'm not gonna lie after that close match with Denial I guess they kind of match up badly against Denial or whatever you would say but they really dealt with Red heavily here and it was impressive stuff they won map number one 250 to 220 map two was 6-2 I believe and then the control was 3-1 to one, even though Red are typically very good on control but Splice are as well especially gridlock control they have the setups the communication is very very strong indeed and I was very impressed listening to their comms actually at how impactful accuracy is in the communication standpoint and yeah he has been playing a lot better this tournament it was crucial here against red reserve it didn't seem like scraps played the best series of his life and they're gonna fall down to losers to play none other than reciprocity because they got through the gauntlet so far beating gen g who had defeated optic gaming once again gen g win both hard points and lose both search and destroys reciprocity just about take the control in a very close forward affair they won map number two as well and they came all the way down to a map five on frequency gen g goes up five to two and reciprocity bring it back baby they've done this before and they do it yet again right here they did a 5-1 comeback I think on Enigma 6 at the Pro League qualifier and yeah they do a 5-2-1 here Dylan Cod though what a performance from him he got a hellstorm got a crucial first blood in the round 11 and then he has to clutch out the 1v2 he effectively only had to win one gunfight but because he won it they ended up winning the game and that's just incredible from Reciprocity they go game 5 round 11 again they're gonna make it through and it's going to be the battle of the brothers yet again but this time they've got Dylan Cod on their team how much difference will that make so this is the bracket if you want to look at it in all its glory here so well I don't want to go through the matches again I've already gone through them but LG versus Splice is going to be your winners finals a rematch from the groups now in the groups the result was as follows it was a 3-1 victory 
for Splice over Luminosity. So whether they can replicate that performance is yet to be seen. LG probably looking stronger now than they were throughout the groups. And the matches start very early today. Enigma 6 versus 100 Thieves and Red versus Wreck and Looters round 4. They both start at 3 p.m. GMT, which is my time. 11 a.m. Eastern, 10 a.m. Central, and I guess like 8 a.m. Pacific time. So yeah, you guys are gonna better be ready on your horses for this to kick off because this is going super early today. Also, we have the final of the open bracket between Face Clan Black and Mind Freak. So this is like Simp and Selium's team against the Mind Freak guys, Aluka, Shocks, those lads. That's also starting at the same time here. So we have a few streams going on. We have a Bravo, a Charlie, and an Alpha stream is going to be the final of the open bracket. But yeah, Bravo and Charlie are going to be the ones where the two losers bracket matches are on and then the rest of the tournament we have losers round five so whoever wins between these guys goes against each other so maybe red i mean typically red reserves should have the benefit over reciprocity i'm going to go with history again and say red are going to win 100 thieves over e6 i think uh, should be relatively good for them i think 100 thieves are going to continue to make it through to be honest i know red beat 100 thieves in the pools but i think that 100 thieves they're looking solid they're on a run maybe they can make one of these most fabled losers bracket runs i've ever seen given they got unlucky i think going down to losers initially then we have lg versus spice in the winners bracket whoever loses that will play the winner of 100 of well these four teams and then it goes all the way to the grand finals starting at only 10 30 gmt which is 5 30 local time in central time 6 30 p.m eastern and then 3 30 p.m pacific time so very early grand finals overall make sure you guys tune in and if your favorite team has gone out of the tournament and you're looking for someone else to root for one of the good ways to do it is just to root for whoever beat your team i wouldn't recommend tuning out for the rest of the weekend the action is phenomenal it's super entertaining reciprocity go game five every map and i'd recommend supporting whoever beat the team that you wanted to win so if you're an optic fan genji beat you then reciprocity beat genji and yeah reciprocity are a really fun team to root for for, I definitely want you to tune into the action because this is something you shouldn't miss. It's super entertaining and these open events don't come around too often nowadays. So anyway, hope you guys enjoyed the video. Like if you did, subscribe if you're new as always. Road to 100k baby. And uh, yeah, thank you guys so much for watching as always and I will see you next time.